Hello everyone, I am Professor Rekha Murthy. Uh, today I am going to explain about the, the second uh, experiment that is related with the Sampner's test. So the experiment two is Sampner's test on a similar transformers and determination of a combined and individual transformer efficiency. What is the aim of this experiment is we need to conduct the Sampner's test on a two identical transformers and to obtain a graph of percentage efficiency versus the load so before we go with this experiment we should know what why do we conduct the sumpness test the alternative name for this test is called as a back-to-back -back test right so why do we have to conduct the sumpness test though we know the efficiency and the regulation of a transformer can be determined from the oc and sc tests what we had discussed in the previous session so that can be determined accurately, uh, but for the determination of temperature rise, it is required that the transformer be put on a full load for a number of hours. So we have to find out the temperature rise. So transformers, if we have for a smaller rating, it can be loaded by means of the lamp loads or by other means. But it is very difficult to arrange a suitable loads for higher ratings of a transformer for purpose of testing. And though the load is arranged in such case, it leads to be a tremendous wastage of electrical energy. Therefore, the Sumpner's experiment will help out to calculate the efficiency and the regulation of the transformer. So why do we call this as back-to-back -back test? That is because one transformer is loaded on the other. So hence it is called to be as the back-to-back -back test. So the Sumpner's test is going to provide the data for determining the regulation, efficiency and also the heating under the load conditions. And here we are going to make use of the two identical transformers. Both of the transformer will be connected to the supply in such a way that one transformer is loaded on the other. So whatever the power drawn from the supply is that necessary for supplying the iron and copper losses of both of the transformer. So the primary windings of the two transformers will be connected in parallel across a single phase supply. So instead of going with this theory, we can also go with the circuit diagram, then we can understand. Before that, what are the apparatus to be required to connect to rig up a circuit? Let us see that. So we require the ammeter as what we had seen in the OC test that is 0 to 1 ampere. We require it for which test? Open circuit test, right? In the previous session. And 0 to 10 amperes we required for the short circuit test, 0 to 30 volt we required it for the short circuit test and 0 to 300 we required it for the OC test. So it's a combination of all these ammeters and voltmeters, the same thing we are repeating here in, as what we did for the OC and SC test. What is the difference? The difference we require an additional voltage that is voltmeter that is 0 to 600 volts which will be connected across the uh, secondaries of the two transformers and fat meter as visual we require it LPF fat meter and the UPF fat meter and also and the single phase transformer that is 2 kVA we are going to use so we require two identical transformer to conduct this test so the two number of the transformer is required now let's move on with the circuit diagram. So this part, what you can see here, this part of a circuit is nothing but is similar to that of the open circuit test what we had conducted in the first session. But 
what is the remaining thing here this is your the copy of an open circuit test circuit diagram and the below one is the almost a copy of your the short circuit test circuit diagram the do is let out but here we need to connect it the secondary of the next second transformer so it is back to back test so s2 which is let out and s2 which is let out from the first transformer and the second transformer it will be connected to the voltmeter so that is only the difference the remaining all what we had done in the oc and dc test it is almost the same so here the voltmeter we are going to use uh, 0 to 300 per 600 volts and uh, uh here uh, we are going to connect one spst switch in between of this because this spst switch when it is open we are going to find out the core loss that is open circuit test will be conducted and when the spst switch is closed then we can find it will be the short circuit test okay fine so after that we are going to complete the loop and also we need to connect the short, uh, spst uh, we need to connect the voltmeter across this spst switch okay then this also the left out is the primary of a second transformer is also being connected back to back p1 is also connected back to back and p2 is also connected back to back so it's a very simple one we need to combine the two circuits that is oc test and a short circuit test circuit okay now let's move on with the procedure what we are how you are going to conduct this experiment so here the with the spst switch is kept open and the auto transformer make sure the auto transformer is in minimum position and the supply is switched on okay right right then the polarities of the secondary voltages of a transformer will be checked by making use of the voltmeter which is connected across the spst switch so i hope so you can see that this voltmeter which is of the range of 0 to 600 this voltmeter is just to check the polarities of the secondary voltages okay fine how to check that so if the voltmeter indicates zero reading then the spst switch is closed spst switch is closed if the voltmeter reads zero reading then we need to close the spst switch and we can conduct the experiment if the voltmeter indicates twice the secondary voltage then the secondary terminals that is the secondary terminals of any one of the transformer will be interchanged it will be interchanged to make that voltmeter to read zero then only the spst switch is closed so we have to make ensure that this voltmeter should read zero when the spst switch is open if it is reading twice the reading then we have to enter we have to switch off the supply we have to uh, switch off the supply and we need to interchange this connections of the secondary windings okay when let's see that the voltmeter is going to read zero so spst switch is closed now by operating the auto transformer the voltage is applied now we are going to uh, switch on this i mean we are going to close the spst switch then vary the auto transformer such that the voltage applied to the secondary is increased gradually till they carry the rated current what is the rated current 8.7 amperes for 2 kV transformer as what we discussed in the previous session the readings of all the meters will be noted and tabulated then we have to bring back we have to bring back the auto transformer to to, to, to zero voltage position and open the spst switch then the supply switches so let us move on with this the small procedure what we had followed and this will be the tabular column which are going to tabulate it so this will be the voltage which you will get it at your uh, the uh, the first transformer the voltmeter which you had connected and uh, the iot this 
uh, will be the current which is flowing the at the open circuit and this will be the watt meter the first watt meter for first part of a circuit we need to calculate the k1 and k2 because that is a what is it it is a k constant we have to consider it and we need to multiply with the watt of uh, watts how much power we get it then this will be the short circuit voltage at the secondary part of your circuit and this is the current which you are going to keep it as a constant that is 8.7 ampere which you are going to keep as a constant then we have to note down all these readings okay so since there will be a two watt meter we need to calculate separately the k1 and k2 constants then we will get our total core losses that is at w not t and also the core loss of a one transformer since we are using a two transformer so this uh, each transformer core losses of one transformer let me consider as a pi which is equal to w1 by 2 half of it and total copper loss will be the wc2 that is w2 watt meter second watt meter and again the co copper loss for a one transformer that can be given as pc is equal to w2 by 2 okay then uh, the total uh, copper loss okay just a minute this will be the core loss of another transformer that will be w2 by 2 and the total copper loss will be the another one that is w1 okay so w1 and w2 is uh, giving uh, the total core losses then we need to calculate the i not and v not i not will be the i not 2 divided by 2 and v not will be the v not t and wc will be the wc uh, t divided by 2 and w not this will be the w not divided by 2 this will be the results of your the open circuit and uh, for the short circuit wc vac we need to calculate it from which cos phi not will be equal to w not divided by v not into i not so where do you substitute uh, these formulas so these formulas will be substituted in the efficiency formula so here i can show it so that is x into kv into cos phi into 10 power of 3 divided by x into kv into 10 power of 3 plus woc that is open circuit uh, the watt meter readings plus the x square times of wac that is the copper losses of the each of the transformers okay so also we need to calculate the uh, the components of the no load current that is uh, the magnetizing uh, component current that is i mu is equal to i not into sin phi not and uh, i w will be equal to i not into cos phi not then the shunt branch reactants x not will be equal to v not divided by i mu and the loss component uh, that is this is another loss component and the shunt branch resistance will be the r not divided by r not is equal to v not divided by i w so whenever you prefer this total impedance which is referred to the high voltage side it can be denoted as z dot 2 which is equal to vse by ise so resistance and impedance can be obtained as what we had done in the previous session so r not 2 will be equal to wc divided by ic square from this we can find out the x not 2 x not 2 value will be equal to the square root of z square z equal in square minus r equal in square further those values will be now utilized to solve the efficiency so this efficiency can will be calculated for a different values of a fraction of a load that is 0.2 0.4 0.6 0.8 and 1 for the different power factor it can be 1 0.8 and 0.6 will be calculated and plotted the graph so this is what the nature of the graph will be obtained that is the y axis will be the efficiency and x axis will be the x time x fraction of the loads so finally the result will be the sumpness test on a similar transformer is conducted and the combined and individual transformer efficiency will be determined and also the graph of the efficiency and the kv output will be drawn for a different values of the power factor thank you for watching this video